Alright guys, Hatch Crown back again today. Hope you're all doing better and enjoying your day so far. The Black Ops 3 throwback tournament that Zuma put on concluded last night and a familiar set of names taking down the victory and also getting to the top three of the tournament. Illy again looking rather good in this offseason so far. Is that necessarily going to be enough to take Seattle to a good position next season assuming he goes there? Loads of action, loads of highlights here from this Black Ops 3 tournament. So much fun to watch. Very much on Twitter. Your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. Firstly, this from Phase because we saw yesterday the rumours that Call of Duty might start the season in Atlanta at DreamHack Atlanta in the middle of December. That seems like a viable prospect right now and FaZe are kind of saying that maybe that's going to happen. Now if that is the case, I don't think that's going to be a FaZe hosted event. So um, it's okay, but it still will be I suppose an Atlanta home event in some way. Kind of, well we haven't had an Atlanta event in so much time given the fact that, well especially because FaZe have been the number one team of the CDL every single year it's been a long time since there's been a local event there. So good for the local fans and maybe FaZe won't get massively booed even though they probably still will because people will fly in but uh, we'll see about that if of course it goes ahead. Now on a similar note really there's rumours that the Overwatch League if the Overwatch League even goes ahead for next year because I'm pretty sure that most of the teams might just call it a day at that point because of the rumours that have gone around the last couple of months but the OWL are supposedly entering talks with tournament organisers for 2024 and Jake Hale says that uh, this reporting has heard effectively similar things regarding the CDL, specifically as it pertains to discussions with ESL Face It Group. So, you know, ESL Face It, Esports Engine, they're all part of kind of the same operation nowadays, and these are guys that run tournaments. And I think this has been probably a bit of an expectation at some point, especially with the CDL letting go of a lot of staff and the Overwatch League as well at the end of the most recent season, that they might effectively outsource the production of these tournaments to to a third party now on a more regular basis. So that would kind of explain why they've been looking at maybe hosting a DreamHack. And I also expect that after Microsoft come in, this is what they will do. They will go back to a situation where, as it used to be MLG, or, you know, in recent times, maybe Esports Engine, or now they're under ESL Facebook Group, whatever, they will run the tournaments, they will put things on, they will orchestrate things. And Microsoft, I will say, will just kind of put in the money to support that. That's how I expect things to go over the next couple of years here in the Call of Duty League or whether it's even called the Call of Duty League anymore. I don't know. I think things are going to change in the next 12 months quite considerably but um, you know they're already planning it seems for some sort of eventuality like that because it's probably just more efficient to do so to be honest. Now yesterday we also did talk about this story that came around with Nick Maniac from Optics saying that Awakening was earning 200k in his first year as a pro and as I said yesterday this was very surprising to me if this is the case. Now, Ogre 2 says it's not the case. We'll get into that. Just because Florida, I don't think we're like ever like a major spending organization and still it won't be the case of Miami Heretics. They've always been a little bit more frugal in their operations, um, the misfits I suppose, than other organizations have. And Awakening was unknown. The idea is making 200k was like, that's one of the craziest, uh, you know, stats I've really heard if that's true. Now Ogre 2, who was the general manager over there and actually still is for the Miami Heretics, I don't know what Nick is talking about here, but this is not true. So um, very interesting to say I don't know what the number is. If the number is like 190 and not 200, then, you know, sure, Nick is wrong, but it's not really, you know, it doesn't really be that much, does it? But the other question I guess I was wondering was that Awakening only came in like halfway through the year. So he only made that salary on Florida, you would think, for the few months from then to the end of the season. So that wouldn't have totaled the full yearly salary, maybe, and I don't know what he would be making a month there, but yeah, I think for various reasons it probably didn't total the number that Maniac is saying and Ogre 2 seems to have a different perspective. So I wonder if we'll get any more on that. We probably won't, unfortunately. But let's talk about this Black Ops 3 tourney because if you guys didn't see the teams that were put together here, there were probably three teams that people considered to be the big favourites. That was obviously the Dashy Simp, a BC team with Proto, the kind of Optic versus, well, Optic and Phase hybrid in a sense. Then you had Draza and Celium's team with TJ and then Optimum, one of the grind is and, you know, as I've said before, if you go to a Black Ops 4 throwback tournament, it's the likes of Estriel and others, the Black Ops 4 grinders, they tend to win. They've played the game for the last, like, five, six years in a row. The pros come back for a few weeks and... You know, watching Sage, for example, or, you know, Persaged or Sage, whatever you want to call him, watching him play the game is just a lot of fun because 
every little wall bounce or every little bit where you can ledge slide for the movements, he knows like the back of his hand. And it's quite, you know, it's quite spectacular to watch a game with such a high skill gap. Right, Black Ops 2, man, what a good time. And you can see watching guys like Selium play, just, um, you know, how if you're built different, you can really show that against other teams. Just a fantastic game. But those were the three teams, right? Because then at Illy, Prolute, Decimate, and Persage, who was, um, you know, that was obviously a good team on paper. And I know many were expecting that team to win. And it came down to the wide. Now, we did have some other interesting teams, like a little bit of a kind of new LA Thieves looking thing here. Kenny and Envoy, of course, reuniting as well. So yeah, $10,000 on the line, 4v4 Black Ops 3 tournament that goes down. And yeah, just wanted to share a few of the clips from this. Kenny obviously having a good time early doors as well. And they played, I mean, it was full respawn or full, um, you know, best of five, at least in the later rounds in terms of hard point, up playing, search and destroy. I mean, just absolutely spectacular stuff and uh, nice little kill here that Kenny gets as well so um, you know a few interesting screenshots right because this Kenny team Envoy Attach Alec and Kenny Arsities of course they went game three I believe search and destroy against the eventual champions we'll get into and they got slabbed so hard here on SD infection I'm not really surprised watching um you know some of the play and how good this team is but yeah beating those guys was very early doors looking like a massively tall order and then we even got the dashi team played up against these guys and this was stronghold hardpoint so usually you might expect the s d grinders or let's say the grinders to be really good at search but not so good in the respawns but persage here has two minutes 30 in the hill 41 in 26 no people will say he's cheating but i don't really think that's the case i think this guy has just been a living and breathing black ops 3 and to be honest like i think that sounds like a pretty good life as far as i'm concerned and on the other side proto got giga fried this series <laughs> he was 16 in 33 game one i think game two went like two and eight they heat waved him off the map so that wasn't so ideal simp is also so much fun to watch in this game i was also a little bit confused by some of the attachments i was seeing used on let's say the cuda for example now i know that i think tacticals were banned so they had quite a few points to play around within their kind of pick 10 system but still the go-to three attachment combination on the vmp when that was the meta weapon was um quick draw grip stock and on the CUDA, I saw Simp running the Long Barrel, and I'm pretty sure it was well known that Long Barrel didn't really do anything on the SMGs. It was really good on the ARs, but on the SMGs, I think it only increased your minimum damage range by not that much, so it didn't really make much difference at all. So I was a little bit surprised to see Long Barrel on the CUDA, to be honest, and even the grip attachment itself, I don't think was necessary on the CUDA at all. But um, anyway, doesn't really matter. These guys are better than me. And Selium was just, I mean, we'll just have to look at some of the clips here. A few of them from Selium, a few of them from elsewhere in the tournaments. Just watching this game is just so much fun compared to what we've had to deal with for the last couple of years. Okay, okay. There, giant. I'm holding on to Rissa. One shot, top left, there's gonna be more, there's gonna be more. I have left, I have left, I have left. I'm gonna get right, I'm gonna get right. 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 Oh, actually, 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 just. Uh, nice. Yeah, hold it back. Hold, hold it. I'm backing up. Right, right. One shot. One shot. One shot. One shot. Nice, Sal. Come on. I'm left. 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 MC pissing, I'm off that shit. Ooh! 37 and 17, bro! Let's get her. I got Reese, I have camo. I have camo now. Here, I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it right to you guys. I'm bringing it right. Top broken, top broken, I'm one. Oh my god. You ran green, you ran green. I'm coming right. Hold on, BP. You have time. I dropped one ball, one ball, please. Bang, baby, come on! Nah, that's an insane call out. That's good comms. I don't like that he put. Where did he plant? Oh, Can't even see bomb. He has to OE for good. it. He's good now. He has to OE to check bomb though if he's on it. Should have planted it on the front side. Oh, this is sketch. Oh my. This is so sketch. He still got. Good glitch. Oh! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! It's disrespectful to the game! It's this It might be fast, thank you. Yo, what's flanking? What's flanking? Here it comes. Nice, good job. 
I mean, I'm bad with you. I got two. I think two. Good shit. Most. There was also this that a couple of guys pointed out to me. So Zuma, maybe accidentally or not, I don't really know, leaked his DMs on stream. And the only thing that I was even you know, interested in here was this one from Prolude, where you can see that he says, and I have my sound settings pulled up because many people were kind of wondering whether Prolude, people call him like EQ loot or whatever, because in some of the early chows, it was kind of well known that Prolute was quite likes to turn on the sound equalization, shall we say. But it was a bit of a GA this tournament that let's not use it. So I think Prolude tried to stream and ensure that that wasn't going to be the case. Also, like Dashi, I thought these shots were really clean because the SVG was the AR or the, um, the sniper, sorry, that most people use. But the Locust was always Dashi's favorite. And I mean, these shots here, this second shot especially is pretty magnificent. Nice little way to hold the fight. Kills Enable as well. That pretty much won them the round at that point. So some good stuff. But the grand finals eventually team Draza knocked out I believe in a 3-2 fashion team Dashi and then they were to play Ely, Prolute, JT that being decimated and besaged in the grand finals and eventually it goes all the way down to the wire and Ely's team get the job done again. Ely just the other day won that big tournament for the um, the Call of Duty Kings or whatever got the job done in the grand finals against the FaZe guys and Ely is at it again. So impressive stuff from Ely because I know that at the very start of the offseason, there was talk that, oh, you know, Illy's a bit washed. He's not playing so well in these throwback games. But Illy was one of, I mean, this is why when Illy first came into the league in 2020, he was so hyped up because of the stuff that he was doing, even back in Black Ops 3, alongside guys like Simp elsewhere. So kind of the usual suspects here with Team Illy winning it, Draza's team seconds, and um, Dashi's team third. So the phase guys always are going to be in consideration. But Illy's been doing very well himself as well. Obviously chose good teams teammates also but um hopefully it bodes well for you know a new good season for Ilya Hedge right because Ilya's had a hard time the last couple of seasons especially the thumb injury on the optic days now um you know steps away from the team for quite some time at the end of the season after getting benched really and he's gone from optic now but they still haven't like even put out like a thank you graphic I'm pretty sure for some reason so uh, maybe they, they probably never will but we think he's joining Surge with a boozer Arsatis and Hook. It doesn't sound great, but um, hopefully an Illy resurgent season, right? It would be nice to have a big comeback on our hands here for Illy going forward. If, you know, hopefully he has a great season. I'll be looking forward to it if he does. Great tournament, as Draza says. Always good fun watching Black Ops 3. I wish we got more stuff like this, to be honest. I believe, though, the next tournament that Zuma will be running will be a Cold War throwback tournament, which is also good. I would be down for every throwback tournament to be Black Ops 3, personally, but, you know, it is what it is. And Arsatis is looking to potentially reunite with the FaZe guys. Now, I don't know how possible this might be because usually they only have, like, you know, two players and one franchise on one team. So I don't know if they really could get Simper, BZ, Cell, and Arsatis. It depends. I'm sure they could find an exception if they wanted to. And it would be interesting to see the, you know, like, FaZe, I don't think, ever cemented themselves as like a dynasty if they'd have won something or one or two events of all the finals they made in vanguard i think they kind of would have done to some degree but um you know they at least had their era as phase with arsities during the cold war season when they were by far the best team and it would be nice to see that team run it back again on the same title they dominated a couple of years ago but they probably will be rather hard to stop so uh, yeah illy and black ops 3 go had it had it seems we'd even tweeted this out absolutely Slamming Prolute 250 to 48 in this half point game. And I think this was even, yeah, later at night, wasn't it? So this is classic Illy. Wins the tournament, doesn't get off for the day, but decides to do some 1v1s against somebody else. So good to see Illy's grinding again, back on form, and, um, you know, reminiscent in some way of the classic Illy clip from all the way back in 2016 with Adam Killer Sloss first seeing. And this movement today doesn't seem anything crazy, right? But at the time, especially for a guy like Killer, it was just mind-blowing that Illy was able to do stuff like this. So, um, you know, just good times, to be honest. But very much to Twitter, your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.